Okay, thank you everyone for joining today. My name is Adrian Ma. I'm from Cloud Dynamics. Today I'm going to talk about how uh, we have interpreted and uh, interfaced into OpenStack and made it available for use for uh, enterprises. Uh, first thing is a little bit of background on Cloud Dynamics. Uh, we are a Canadian technology innovator. Um, what we build today is what we call Cloud DC. It is a zero-touch uh, modular high-density data center, and it's fully um, turnkey in the sense that it's delivered and designed for service providers. Uh, our goal ultimately is really to drive business value and increase, uh, I guess, profitability and reduce costs for our customer base. So Cloud DC comes uh, three main segments. Uh, at the very first layer is EcoDC. EcoDC is our own uh, creation. It is a physical data center envelope, uh, data center facility. We use free cooling technology, and uh, we've done research over at Ryerson University to uh, improve the cooling uh, capabilities. We can bring our PUE down to approximately 1.1 or below using that data center fabric and we can deploy as small as two racks for our service provider customers. In the center is our SIF layer. The SIF layer is essentially the cloud infrastructure fabric. That's normal, standard hardware you would get off the shelf from uh, Cisco, um, HP, Dell, and Juniper, et cetera. And that's where uh, the different stacks would sit as well. So OpenStack will sit in there. Uh, CloudStack sits there. We have uh, versions that work with uh, Microsoft as well as VMware. And uh, what sits on top of all of that is what we call CDOS. CDOS is our, I guess, presentation layer. It also provides capability for us to integrate everything into a single uh, unified fabric. So we bring capability from SDN into uh, CDOS, and we're one of the few companies today that can deliver SDN uh, in this scenario where it's not only within the data center, but between data centers. And this is very critical because we can actually build data centers that are very small and uh, now we can distribute them across the city without consuming an additional data center footprint. Uh, by doing so, we also have the capability of moving workloads around and the IP space around with it. And that's very critical in CDOS. So again, just a very quick overview of the things that we interface with in CDOS. Uh, on the left side is uh, our, our SIF hardware stack that we talked about. That's where all the industry standard hardware is coming from. Uh, we are looking to integrate uh, OCP into our technology stack as well, and that will be coming uh, very shortly. The various virtualization stacks, uh, today we started out, uh, I guess a few years ago, building on cloud stack, and the reason for that was uh, because of the enterprise type capabilities. OpenStack has come a long way in the last little while. So we are here today announcing that uh, we are uh, integrated with OpenStack as well. And uh, on the far right, you'll see public clouds. So we have the capability to integrate and present all the public clouds uh, under the same interface. And we'll go through that interface in a, in a minute here. Uh, I talked a little bit about SDN. Really, um, the key factor is that we're, we're working and contributing uh, also into Open Contrail. And Contrail is a, is a product that we selected to deliver SDN and to, to provide the engine for uh, being able to move our IP spaces around. And, and it's quite critical in our model because uh, the bottom line is uh, we want to move the data closer to the people, we want the data centers closer to the people. So having the ability to move workloads around is uh, quite critical. Another capability that's interesting uh, that we created is really the ability to actually subdivide resources within a cloud and to create a hierarchical cloud structure. So you'll see in the demo uh, to follow the, that we can actually uh, subdivide into different departments. Each department can further subdivide into different application groups or user groups, and we can provide a detailed billing on each of these layers. Uh, Role-based access control, again, this is a, a very critical feature in the enterprise world, and it's around uh, being able to deliver, um, I guess, user partitioning. So you don't want a necessarily a billing user to be able to access and provision cloud infrastructure, and uh, vice versa. So, so having different user profiles and at different layers of the cloud is, is quite critical. 
So this is just a kickoff into the demo. I was going to do the demo live today, but I was worried about the internet connectivity. So what I did was I made a recording last night. Uh, I'm just going to pull that back and I'll walk you guys through it here. So the screen here that you see is actually our login portal. Uh, we're just logging in to create some cloud. Now, at the very first uh, login, what you'll see here is a dashboard. It tells you all the resources that are available to you uh, within that level of the cloud. It tells you what's allocated, and also if there's multiple sites within your cloud uh, that will be displayed. Also, here you have different events that you can see in the last 100 events. So uh, for security purposes, you'll want to, want to know what's always happening in your cloud. And I think uh, basically that's the cloud, just to refer to the diagram there. We're going to switch over to a sub-cloud right now. Uh, so essentially, uh, there's two sub-clouds. I'm going to pick sub-cloud number two. And in sub-cloud number two, what you'll notice is it looks exactly the same as a top-level cloud. You can do everything you can do uh, at the top level. The only thing different is the number of CRU or the resources that are available to you. So the number of sites and everything are the same, and you'll still have access to the same servers. So first thing we do in a cloud architecture is to create a VPC. This is the equivalent of a VLAN, and that's a partition within your data center to be able to house, house all your VMs. So there's a default VPC with the account, but we can create a brand new one. Just click through here. So the VPC is uh, relatively quick, actually. OpenStack, uh, we've noticed, is much faster than CloudStack in creating things. So I've created OpenStack Summit as a VPC. We are now going into uh, the next layer where we're going to create some security zones. Uh, with security zones, uh, we can create different uh, VLANs, essentially, or subnets within uh, the VPC. Uh, now, when you create the first uh, VPC, there's a default subnet that's created. Uh, and that can be one you keep, or it can be one you delete, and you can add a different one. Uh, we've simplified this, and this is designed to be able to support enterprise customers who want a simplified uh, experience. So we're going to create a uh, subnet here as an example for and just to show you some subnet ranges that we can support. Okay, we're going to move on to servers now. So to create a server, I think what we're going to do today is to create a uh, web server. So we go into the server tab, and under servers, I'm just going to hit create, pick the site that I want the server running on, And it'll take a few minutes. Uh, there we go. So now we get to select our templates, uh, what type of OS you're running. Here we can actually pre-provision uh, different platforms as well. So it's not only just OS level. And we're going to select a medium-sized template. And give the server a name. and I'm going to stick it inside the VPC that we just created. I'm just going to put it in the web zone for the security group, and we'll, we'll open up the security rules for that shortly. What's unique about our uh, capability is that we not only handle uh, what OpenStack does natively, but we actually add additional capabilities, things like perimeter firewalls, hardware firewalls, load balancers, and all of this is actually being orchestrated by the same interface that you see here. So the server takes a few minutes to spin up. I actually recorded this live last night. Uh, you'll notice the time in the corner there, so it just takes a few seconds. And all this is actually the same amount of time you would have uh, in real time. So I'll get you some details on the server. It gives you an IP address, uh, the size, the OS template that we used, etc. Okay, so next thing we're going to do is actually make this server available within our cloud infrastructure. Uh, we've designed this system to be extremely secure. Uh, our standard architecture is designed to be PCI compliant, 
so there's multiple layers of firewalls and security. Uh, so first thing we have to do is enable it for internet access. So that before, before you can do anything to go out and communicate out to the internet, that has to be enabled. So now it's enabled. We have a yes in the subnet. And the next thing we're going to do is actually go into the, uh, into the server and uh, map it to a cloud IP. A cloud IP is actually making it publicly available within our cloud infrastructure. So this is, the, this is one step before making it available to the public internet. So it's another layer of security that happens here. Now you see in the top right, it says reboot. Uh, this is a, a, I guess, a requirement in OpenStack after the NAT has been uh, created. So we're just going to reboot the server. And just a couple more steps and we'll have a live server on the internet. Now again, this is because all these different layers of security are designed because they're meant to be supporting and mimicking enterprise infrastructure. Uh, so the multiple layers of security, multiple zones for, uh, or tiers within our security zones, uh, those are all flexible things that can be created in our environment. So you'll see now there's a cloud IP that has been created. And the next thing we're going to go is go to the perimeter firewall. So this is where we assign a public IP and we start creating some rules on the... This is actually going out to uh, a hardware firewall on the uh, outside of the cloud stack. So we're, we're just... I think this particular firewall is a uh, Juniper SRX series firewall. So now we have a public IP. And I believe the next thing we do is we're going to add some rules to make it available on the internet. Let's create rule. It automatically selects the VM that's running. Uh, if there were more VMs, you'd have a bigger list. And actually, I called it SSH, uh, but I think I came back afterwards and changed it to web on port 80. So you can check off the check mark and uh, you can rename it if you need to. Okay, so one more layer of security in terms of firewall that we have to go through is actually the security zone. We have to add port 80 into the security zone itself so that maps all the way through into our infrastructure on the back end firewall. So we put it into uh, the, one of the default security groups called web. And in there, we're going to add a rule for uh, port 80. All right, so that is essentially how we created a web server. Uh, we opened up uh, two layers of firewalls and we essentially uh, started it up live. Uh, so what you'll see going forward, uh, happy to give you more demos at the booth. We're over at uh, E37 and uh, yeah, love to talk to you some more about that. Okay. Thank you everyone.